The Nile River Explained in Under 3 Minutes Chapter 1 How Long is the Nile? Determining a river's length is usually quite an easy endeavor. You locate the mouth, walk up to its source, and count your steps along the way. For most rivers, this works out just fine. When swamps and rainforests hide the source deep inside a remote mountain range, like it is the case for the Nile, this can get tricky though. While the Blue Nile, its major tributary, has been well understood since ancient times, the main stem, also called the White Nile, has remained a mystery until modern times. For the longest time, Lake Victoria was considered the source of the Nile. This however neglects the fact that the lake itself is fed by major rivers. The longest one of these, the Kagera River, which itself has this tributary, this tributary, and even this creek in the Rwandan mountains, competing for the title of the furthest source of the River Nile. Until the scientific community settles a winner, however, it can be said that either of these three sources makes the Nile the longest river in the world, with a staggering 6,695 km long course. Chapter 2 The Nile's Hydrography Regardless of which headwaters determine the true source, the Nile starts off somewhere south of the equator and flows all the way to the 31st degree latitude, passing over one third of the northern hemisphere. Over this length, the Nile drains an area of over 3,200,000 square kilometers, representing 10% of the entire African continent. Considering these vast distances, it is no surprise that different sections of the Nile experience vastly different climates and topographies. The White Nile starts off in a tropical wet savanna region, giving it a constant flow of water year-round. New tributaries and evaporation keep the water levels in balance, until its confluence with the Blue Nile in the center of Sudan's capital, Khartoum. The Blue Nile and many of its tributaries originate in the Ethiopian highlands, which experience extreme seasonal variety in precipitation. During the wet season between May and August, they contribute over 70% of the entire discharge of the Nile, with a volume of over 5,600 cubic meters per second. The dry season, on the other hand, can see a flow of as little as 2% compared to the peak, and in extreme cases can even dry out completely. The seasonal variations heavily influence the downstream life around the River Nile, bringing us to Chapter 3, Agriculture at the River Nile. A total of 257 million people live in direct proximity to the Nile River, and for thousands of years they have worshipped and depended on the river's water, fish stock and annual sediment flow. Especially the water from the Blue Nile carries large amounts of silt, which has been eroded from the rapid streams down the Ethiopian highlands. During the height of the wet season, the river floods the desert and delta, leaving behind hundreds of thousands of tons of fertile silt, which has been the backbone of the Egyptian agriculture for many thousands of years. This delicate balance of flooding, growing and harvest has only recently been thrown off with the construction of the Asfan High Dam in 1962, which blocks vast amounts of sediments from transitioning and incidentally created Lake Nasser, the second largest man-made lake in the entire world. 